the barcode scanner plugin had the purpose of taking a, uh, a scan of the of the barcode. We have a plugin then that will allow us to take a photo of anything we want, like the cover of the comic or pages or whatever. So I want to add a, uh, a new plugin. Um, I would say for the moment let's close both the JS and HTML files. It's probably okay to do this while they're open, but I feel better to close them because we're going to change things about our app that are very foundational. We're going to add a plugin. I feel safer to not have any files open. I don't think anything will change when we add this plugin, but I feel safer to close them. So I'm going to close both of those files. And then we'll go back to our config XML file. Plugins. This one is one that's built in because it's very common. Camera. I want to add the ability for our app to use the camera. Now it's not going to be smart like the scanner camera. The scan the purpose of the scanner camera is to read that barcode and then you do something with it. This camera takes a photo. Then you have to do something with it. We're going to save it into our pouch and then we're also then when we see view info, it'll show the picture of the comic. So select it and click add. And very similar to what we did with the barcode, we need to write some HTML to trigger it, to display it. And then we need to write some JavaScript to uh, get it all working. Similar to what we did with the barcode, after that has installed, you can then close XML. We'll save it, then close it. After you've uh, changed that XML file, go back to the index file. And we need the button. So we'll go back to where we had barcode, line 167. I'm going to create another horizontal ruler. I'm going to create another input field that will hold something, another button that will start the camera. This is 167. Or 68. So uh, line 168 after the HR for the barcode and the button. Let's do another HR to separate it visually. Another input. You could do a little copy and paste, but we'll do it this way. So type um, text also. No placeholder, but it needs an ID. We'll call it in photo. This will be an input field about the photo. Needs then a button to start the, the camera. Let's say take photo. ID, BTN, save photo. We've got an input field for the barcode, a button to save the barcode. We've got an input field for the picture, and then a button to uh, and a button to save the photo. While we're here in the HTML file, instead of jumping back and forth, while we're here, let's set up a little bit more of our HTML. Then we'll do the rest in the JavaScript. So we need the button, and then in that info pop-up, we need the placeholder to display the graphic. This will be a little bit different than um, the plain text, because now we're dealing with a graphic. So we need to go over to where our pop-up is, where we just created that barcode paragraph in the pop-up. Let's see, what was that at? line 197. Another paragraph. Now what's different here is an image tag. The image needs a source, but at the moment the source will be nothing. 
we're going to dynamically display an image depending on the photo that was loaded. Now here it's going to Visual Studio is going to say going to give you a hint here. You should you should put your image source here. Well, we're going to ignore that because this image will load up dynamically. Insert width and height. Okay. Anyway, uh, also looking forward, let's add a class comic image. I know that eventually the photo is going to load up. The photo might be too big. So if we attach a class, we should be able to then resize this graphic a little easier. Comic IMG. The idea here is now we've got a placeholder sort of in a placeholder. The image tag in the P tag, which is inside of the div, div show comics info. Okay, we'll jump over to the JavaScript. Line 145, we'll do the same thing that before we finish our bars here for the pouch area. Before the end of here, database, L button save photo equal to pound button save photo. And here again, semicolon, uh, not semicolon because it's a continuation of the previous variable definitions. Same as before, we created JavaScript objects representing an HTML node. BTN save photo, element, BTN save photo. At the end of our code, we will set up the onClick handler to run a function, function save photo. We'll define the photo. We need to then add the code that turns on the camera to take the photo to be part of our uh, data that we're saving to the database. So we go to the very end of the code. We had L button save barcode, new line, L ETN save photo dot on click function save photo Okay, so if we're talking about function save photo, we need to define the function save photo. Backing up, after the end of function save barcode, we're going to define function save photo.
So to see how this works, this is again over at the um, at the documentation. Now we looked at the documentation for the barcode scanner on that developer's GitHub account. Camera plugin is one of the like core plugins as part of Cordova. It was in the list automatically there, config.xml. It's a core plugin. The documentation for a core plugin is at the site, if you recall, cordova.apache.org. Remember that site. So this is the one that makes our whole project mobile cross-platform mobile friendly. Remember, behind the scenes, Visual Studio uses Cordova to compile our code to all the platforms. Let's go to documentation. This is cordova.apache.org. On the left side, chapters, all the way at the bottom, you will see under plugins, camera. This is pretty technical, scrolling down. Um, API reference, scrolling down, these are the things you can do. Dot get picture, other stuff, and coding. Let's see, scrolling, there's an example to look at. You got camera and camera. So the first camera lowercase example. Navigator.camera.getPicture, camera success, callback, camera error, callback, options. And the options are defined later on. On the left side, under the first camera. So this one, I think, uh, this documentation is needs to be kind of cleaned up. It's really hard to kind of read it about how what's how does it work. It's very techy, and it has like all of these tables about here's the possible options. Well, they're trying to do like an example down here. Samples. These are supposed to be okay. Here's a quick sample on how to take a photo and display uh, thumbnails and such. But even those samples, I think, aren't as nice as they could be. So the documentation is here if you want to learn everything about it, but I've already got some code that we're going to use. So we're not really going to copy and paste anything. But the big idea is that under camera, there's an example right here. We're going to have navigator.camera.getPicture and then some callbacks and some options. I won't even copy and paste that because that's not really complete. We'll write it ourselves. This is the documentation for the camera. Inside of function save photo, navigator dot camera dot get picture capital P. We have um, the syntax says a um, a success callback function camera success comma function camera fail or failure comma options options in JSON format curly brackets.
We'll fill in those options in a moment. Next line, function fn camera success. This has data and function function camera failure. This has data as well. Okay, so if you break both of those functions temporarily, you can do console log data. To both of them, you'll get different data back. You try to take the photo, there's going to be a success. So the success function will run. Something will display in the console. Okay, you're trying to take the photo, something happens. The camera crashes. You cancel taking the photo, maybe press back. So then a failure is triggered, and in the console we get some sort of data, some sort of feedback from canceling. Actually, just for it to be obvious, let's back up here. Console log will say in quotes plus success. Failure. So instead, I wanted to explicitly say there was a success. What was that successful data? It was a failure. What was that failure data? <coughs> we'll set one option and then we can start testing it. The options are in these curly braces in JSON format. The options are found in the documentation, and again, they need to work on this. This, this, I don't like really the way it's laid out, because eventually there's camera dot camera options, for example, a quality option, and there's really no example near where it tells you what it is. It's way down lower. This is a really long article. There's a lot to explain. So they should kind of put this together because they have these options like the quality of the photo. But how do you write it? It should tell you here. But the idea is that this is an object, so it's JSON format, quality, key, and some value from 0 to 100. So in practical terms, in this we have to write in quotes, quality. colon, and then its corresponding value of, let's say, 50. Uh, this one is not quotes, or yes quotes, yes quotes. Actually, okay, it's number, so no quote. No quotes. It's a number.
Okay, so this says, uh, let's get a picture. Let's take a picture. Uh, what happens successfully taking the photo? What happens with a failure? And the quality of the photo will be 50 from 0 to 100. So what's going to happen if we did take the photo successfully? It'll jump down here and show something in the console. If it didn't take it successfully, it'll jump down here and show something in the console. I'm going to save it and run it. I have a new button in my Save Comics screen. A new button that says, take a photo. I'm going to try to take a photo. On the device, I'll get a new screen to take a photo. I'll tap to take a photo. And then I'll keep an eye out on the console here in Visual Studio. I added a new plugin. This again takes a moment to compile the first time. All right, so my app's loaded up. I'm also going to clean out my JavaScript console here just so that I can see more. I'm going to do save comic, get a brand new button that says take a photo, I take a photo. It's going to open up the, the photo screen here. I'm going to take a photo of myself. Took a photo. Pretty cool photo. So something pops up here. I've got a photo. I have to then accept it. A little check mark. Accept. Console. Success. File. Blah, 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 dot JPEG. I'm going to try that again. Take a photo. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to be like, I'm going to take a photo. I'll cancel it. I'll go back. I'm going to cancel it. Failure. Camera canceled. So the photo got saved in the app? Good question. The photo at the moment is not being saved anywhere. Notice how it says, um, yeah, it makes it sound like it's actually getting stored. It's technically not getting stored anywhere. It's temporarily kind of floating around until we do something with it. So it's not getting, it can be saved to the device. We need to activate that option, but we never said that option. So we'll do that in a moment. Yes? Um, we were putting this in the database. We save the location. The actual data of the photo is too much data. A photo can be represented as text, but it's a lot of text. So we're only saving the location of where is it stored on the device into the database. And then we retrieve it to display the photo. What if we put it on the server? Where would that go? The actual image? Same sort of thing if. Um, if we want to do that, we have to further program it to transfer the photo to a server. Then it's going to be on a server, and then this path will be to that photo on the server. When we display the photo, we'll then get it from the server and display it in our app. But right now, it's not actually saving it anywhere, really. It's kind of temporary in memory. There is an option here, camera camera options. I don't see it on the menu here. Again, this needs to be cleaned up. But under camera, camera options, there is um, there is no, not type. This is um, This it's it's not destination type. It's it's in here, but um, uh, where is it? It's a true or false. Uh, right here, save to photo album. That's what we want. Uh, save the image to the photo album of the device at the capture. We never said that, so the photo is just floating around somewhere. 
we have to pass it an option. Save it to the device. Boolean is true or false, and there's no default. Notice some of these have a default, the quality. So we didn't have to write 50. 50 is already the quality. But if we want a higher or lower quality photo, we override the default. The default here about destination type, it's an address. It's a link to a photo, not the actual raw data. That's fine. We're using the source of the camera. Well, possible other sources are a photo that already exists on the device. That doesn't make sense. I want to snap a photo, not, not really load a photo. I could load a photo that's already on the device. I would need to change picture source type. What are the possibilities? Well, scrolling down here will tell you the possibilities are the photo library, the camera, save to photo. It has what? Yes, mine too. Okay. We're not. We're going to use that in a moment. Allow edit is true. That's just if you want to cancel it or save it. Just some simple edits. Encoding types. We have JPEG or PNG. Ping. We've never specified a width or a height for this, so it's going to be the full raw huge size of the photo. So we're going to change some of these options. The most important one is save to photo album. We do want to save it to the device. Back to the code then. We have quality, 50. Uh, let's just put it 20, 25, whatever. Comma, we need another option pair here. The important one is quotes save to photo album. Notice the spelling. Why that spelling? Because that spelling is in the documentation. That's how they decided. That's how it has to be. Colon true. The default wasn't even specified, but I guess it's false. So now we're saying take the photo, quality 25%. Also save it to the device. Save it to the photo album of the device. True. I also want to say target width colon say 1024. This is a number, no quotes. Target height. Don't have to specify units, it assumes pixels, or it expects pixels. So be careful here, the syntax. It's JSON, so we've got key and value, comma, key and value, comma, and then in between we've got the um, colons. Put a space between those if you want for more readability. That's curly braces. Those are all the options. I had more in the documentation, like save it as a ping instead of a JPEG, or retrieve it from photos that are already stored instead of taking a new photo. I'm going to run that again. I'm going to take a photo again. Then I'm going to exit the app and go to the device's photo album. Right, you go to your apps and go view the photos. The photo you took should be saved to the device. It'll still be the same success or failure message. Now with these new options, the photo is also stored actually to the device.
Okay, save comic. I've got uh, take a photo. So I take a photo. This loads up. I'm just gonna skin, uh, take a photo of something here. Take a photo. I'll click OK. It says OK. Success. I'm gonna exit the app for a moment. Go to where all my apps are. And mine has a gallery. Yours might have one called Photos. But this has a gallery. Go to gallery, and I look at my latest photo. Photo right there of the uh, of the ad codes. So now it is saving photos to the device. We can get to that photo with this path. So the path doesn't change. The path is a location to the photo on the device. And I always thought it was odd that they have the path of emulated. Uh, it, I don't know why they call it emulated, it, it's a real location. But then also deep down in it, com.smith.cvdb. So there is a folder. If I go, you know, if I plug in my device to my Windows computer and actually kind of open it up and go into the folder structure, there will be a folder called com.smith.cvdb. And that photo will have, will be in there. So what this code is doing just at the moment is confirming that we are taking the photo. The photos are being saved to the device, but they're not really being linked to the comic book yet. The reason we have that empty box to type something is to temporarily put, the, um, put this data, put this path, to the photo. So under a success, we're also then going to target pound in photo dot val data. This data we've seen in the console, it's a path to the photo. So that path, I'm going to put it in temporarily to that empty input field that's on the um, that's in there. I'm going to hide that field in a moment, but I just want to see that field of data show up here because I want to store the location, the path to the photo. I'm not storing the photo in the database. I'm just storing the location to the photo on the device. Take one more photo, click save, take photo, I'm going to take a photo of the screen, I'll accept it, and then in my app, that input field has been filled in with this, this path that I'm seeing in the console. So I have that path to that photo in the input field, which I can edit, but I don't want that. If I edit that path, 
that's going to break the link to the photo. So this is saying, put the path to the photo in the input field in photo. There's a couple of tricks we can do here so that the user doesn't change it. You go back to the index, HTML, that, that path to that photo is in the HTML file, line 169. It's being populated here in photo, this input field. It's a normal input field that we're filling with something. We have a couple of, of options we can add here. We can add disable, disabled, which prevents the user from changing it. So I don't want the user to make a change to it. Question? Uh, can you speak up a little bit? Sorry? Can't hear you? The P tag. Uh, yes? Yeah, but let me fin finish my thought here first, one moment. So this, um, this is setting it to disabled so that the person doesn't change what is in there. If that gets changed, it's a broken link to, to, the, to the photo. Well, also, if uh, I don't even need to show them the path to the photo, I will then add hidden. So there is an input field that is going to temporarily store the path to the photo. The user doesn't need to edit it, so it's disabled. The user doesn't even need to see it, so it's hidden. But I still need the data in there, because then I'll use it in that p tag in a moment. This saves, this allows us to save the, um, in a moment, we're going to use that to, uh, to put it in, in here. But you see what we have, that input field as a sort of like a temporary storage for the path. Similar to what we did with the barcode, we did dot val to in barcode to put that data into the barcode field. We did val to in photo so that then we can use it in the bundle of data. Let's save that and go back to the JavaScript. line 185. So we had a value of what was put into the barcode field, comma. So now we need to check what's the value, what's the path to in photo.
so that creates a variable of the path, the path to the photo we took. We then use it in the JSON data. back where we've got the comic, right? That's the bundle of data. Again, we need a new field. We have these other fields, new field, so comma. So now we've got photo. That's val in photo. So to the database, we're going to save the path to the photo. And that eventually has the db.put, and it puts it into the database, and then we need to display it in that info, in that info box. This is when we use the, the image tag in the p tag in the, um, in the div. This is line 363. Uh, I'm not going to copy and paste it this time. It's going to be different enough that I think it might be interesting to type it. So I'm going to do dollar selector quotes pound div show comics info, like before, yes, but then p colon equal to the sixth one, yes, but then still inside of the quotes, space image. So we're saying an image tag inside of the sixth paragraph, inside of the div to show the comics info. And above it was dot html, we wanted to display some html text. This one's going to be different. We have the image tag. And how is an image tag complete? With the source attribute. So we have dot attr attribute. Dot html is we're going to write some html inside of this div inside of this element. Write some HTML. ATRR, attribute. We're going to set an attribute to something. First of all, which attribute? The attribute of source, comma, success.photo. Our data in the database is success. It has a property of now. Now it has a property of dot photo. If we took a photo, so to the image attribute, to the image tag, set its attribute of source to the photo, the path to the photo. To fully test this, we need to save all our files and run it and create a new comic. Fill in a new title, a new number, a new year, take a photo, do the barcode if you want, <coughs> take a photo, and then view the comics. And now a photo will be attached to your comic, which we need to edit a little bit because it's still too big. But this should at least start to show the photo. So see here with, again, the power of JavaScript, jQuery, etc., we, we have the ability to do anything. 
we're setting the source attribute of a tag dynamically depending on the comic we clicked on. And all of that works because of our algorithm from a while ago when we set up, remember we did this. We're clicking an element, it's this element. This element has all of this data dash IDs. And those are those are IDs are from the database. This loads up. I'm going to save the comic. The comic will be called Super Pen number 99 from 1981. I'm going to click Save to take a photo. I'm going to take a photo of this pen on my desk. I'll accept it. will uh, save. So this, the comic gets saved. View comics. I have a new comic. Super pen number 99. You click the little info button and the info box appears. It's too big. But the info box appears and it's got the name, the number, whatever, and the photo. The photo's there, which I need to resize in a moment. But the um, the photo is now part of the comic. <clears throat> so the photo's too big. That's for what we put the class for. That's why we put um, on the index class comic image. So some quick CSS so that the image is not so big. In the CSS file, at the very end, dot comic image, because it's a class. All we really need for the moment is just a width of 100%. That way it won't stretch out further than the box that it's in. This is in the CSS file. Save everything and then test that again. I want to fill in a title here, and a number, and a year, publisher, comment, and do the barcode. I'm also going to take a photo. all the fields save, comic is saved. I'll go back to view comics and just save the comic, this first comic, and then now it, um, it appears and it's not popping out of the box anymore. So the name of the comic, the number, the year, the publisher, the comment, the new barcode feature from today, the new photo 
feature from today. So now the photo is attached to this comment. What was that? So this goes back to the concept that um, Cordova, underneath it all, is a set of plugins. It's a set of abilities, camera, media, all that stuff, geolocation, barcode scanner. It's a set of pieces to a puzzle. We need to see how the, p the piece works, how to add it to our project, and then what we do with it. It doesn't tell you that. It's what you, what are you going to do with it? So we're capturing a barcode, capturing a photo, putting it into the database, loading it up uh, as needed.